This one's going to take longer than 30 seconds. Don't care. It's about geology. But first, a question. What do you think the most common mineral on Earth is? There are three candidates, but one of them is so difficult to study that it doesn't even have a name. Until now. What we used to call the silicon perovskite polymorph comprises the bulk of the lower mantle, the interior part of the Earth between the core and the crust. It happens when olivine is put under intense pressure, and so it's very unstable on the surface. I had a professor once that said you can make a sample, go out for lunch, and when you get back it's reformed into olivine. That's a problem, because the rules state that the mineral isn't officially discovered until it's found in nature, and nowhere on Earth's surface is sufficient pressures to make this mineral. Thankfully, we're not so limited. Studying an Australian meteorite, two scientists found this mineral in the wild. They think that the meteorite had a lot of high-energy collisions in space, and there was enough energy in these to make this mineral. After five years of studying, a sample was confirmed, and it was named Bridgmanite, after a Nobel Prize winner who did a lot of work on high-pressure materials. Apart from meaning that the most common mineral on Earth does officially exist, does this affect anyone? No, but then discovering a new monkey in the Amazon doesn't really affect anyone either. This is geology for geology's sake. And honestly, it was mostly just an embarrassing omission in the list of minerals.